All right, I am warning you, after this uh, interview, you're going to have a new crush. I can promise you that much. <laughs> Not on just the looks, but the mind as well. Vusi Temba Kwayo, I'm sure you've heard of him. The 32-year-old self-made millionaire is on a new journey of changing the narrative of entrepreneurship in South Africa. He says his aim is to establish and develop high-growth black entrepreneurs in the rural and township markets of South Africa. Uh, this he will do by finding and nurturing entrepreneurs through funding incubation and developing, developing them into enterprises. Uh, some of that passion was seen during the SA Dragon's Den program. Vusi is here. He's in studio with us. So nice to see you again. Welcome. So good to see you. So oh. good to see you again, Leanne. Okay, so let's let's talk because there's too much to Ooh. talk about in such a short amount of time. Right. 32 years old. We still got your, your age yes. right. So, okay, you, we're still 32 years old. Yes. Um, Although you, I, do, I do feel bad because I'm on the other side of 30 now. So <laughs> I don't feel I feel bad. like an old soul. Yeah. Listen, if you've done this much by 32, how did you do this? I'm, I'm, I'm dying to speak to you when you hit the 40s and 50s. Well, how did you do this? Yeah, I'm five years behind my own timeline, right? Yeah, so yeah. I should have been here much sooner. But I, I think I was lucky. I was lucky out of the starting block. So I knew what I wanted to do with my life very early on. And there was no doubt in my mind about what my life looked like. And so all I had to do was just do it. And, and, and the challenge was the just doing part. It took a while to get out of the starting blocks. Yeah. So that was a difficult country to do business, especially if you're not the kind of entrepreneur that we're used to in this country. Yeah. Right? And obviously it's identifying the gaps. And that's, that's kind of what yeah. we as uh, entrepreneurs, as South Africans need to do is find that gap. But how do you find that gap? I mean, there's, there's so many things happening around us. Yeah. So I mean, so the study of gapology, which is effectively what entrepreneurs do. It's interesting. You know, entrepreneurship is not something you can teach. People either have it or they don't, which is just the ability to come in and see opportunities where they don't exist. But um, so the question around how do you find the gap? It's typically around three things. It's you've got to find something people are willing to pay for that they need now and they have the money to pay for it. The minute you tick those three boxes, you're, you're in business. So it doesn't matter what it is. You could be uh, selling water. You could be selling ice cream. You, you could be doing anything. The minute you understand those three things, you effectively have found a gap in the market and you can start servicing that market. Yeah. And, and that's, the, that's the, the, the thing that you do know. Now, I mean, you were part of this Dragon's Den program. Yes. Uh, identify successful entrepreneurs yes. and uh, investing in those businesses so you know how do you you know when somebody is a successful entrepreneur obviously their characters their traits yeah, that yeah. you're looking for in people yeah yeah so that typically for me I look for three things first thing I look for is somebody who's failed before so I've never backed my money or put my money in somebody who hasn't tried something and hasn't failed because if you haven't failed the theory of failure you know entrepreneurship is interesting it's a lot like uh, it's a lot like swimming so if I gave you a textbook on how to swim and you read it for three years and then I took you and chucked you in the ocean you'd, you'd, you'd sink because swimming isn't a theory thing it's a practice thing you have to do it to know how to do it so the first thing i'd say is it's somebody who's failed i, I love people who failed because they've proven they've tried something and that they know what's on the other side of not succeeding which is this failure thing uh, the second is somebody who believes in themselves even when there's ridiculous odds to suggest it's not going to work mm. you know, i always say entrepreneurs are crazy you have to be crazy to be an entrepreneur because you, you, you got to believe you're going to make money month end which often you're not yeah. you got to believe you can compete with big companies which often you can't you got to believe you can reach all your customers which often you won't and you have to believe you can do so cheaply and cost effectively and make a profit which in the early days you probably won't do if you don't believe those four things you're not going to succeed as an entrepreneur so you've absolutely got to be certifiable absolutely crazy and then the third thing is just people who are passionate like you've got to love what you do mm. because i remember in the early days the only thing that fed me was my passion like, there, was, yeah. there was no money at the end of the month in fact there was too much month at the end of the money yeah. so um you just got to be passionate. You got to love what you do. Yeah, I love that. Uh, too much month at the end of the month. Yeah. Because I've been in a situation <laughs> like that before, and it's not a nice place to be. It really isn't. But I want to. I want to talk a little bit about color now, because you know this is this is. I mean, it's there. It's in in, in black and yeah. white. Excuse the pun. But yeah. out of the sixteen businesses on this Dragons uh, yeah. Den program, um, only. Uh, the f of those funded, only four went to blacks, yes. and one was to a female. Yes, yes. What is going wrong? I yeah. mean, when you look at the population, that is not representative 100%. of the population. But obviously, it's not about color at that time. It's about entrepreneurship and that way of thinking. What is wrong yeah. with, with the black power of communities? Let me juxtapose that by then saying, remember, of the five of us who are investing, four were black. So just to be clear, you've got 80% you've got investors who are black, but the investment complexion doesn't reflect the people investing or the dynamics of the country. And money does not know color, does it? 100%, which is the thing, right? So we, in this country, we've taken a 
and this is a, I'm very unpopular for having this view, by the way, but entrepreneurship is not a race thing. You're either going to do it or you're not. Let me put it to you this way. Nobody has ever shown me favor in business because I was black. I was in business because I was in business. The fact that I was black then became an added advantage. So if you want to be in business because you're black, odds are you're not going to survive it. Because at the end of the month, the debit order doesn't ask you, are you black or white? So am I debiting your account or not debiting it? Mm. At the end of the month, the, 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 your customer doesn't go, are you black or white? So am I paying you today or at the end of 30 days? They're going to pay you by their payment terms. So you, know, you ask the question around why was that the investment complexion? It's typically because we have a very big problem in this country around developing real black entrepreneurs but i mean real entrepreneurs not the guy who registers a company gets a tax clearance certificate opens a bank account then goes and starts supplying then goes and starts filling in database registration forms to wait for somebody to say supply me that's not entrepreneurship that's being a businessman those are not the same things mm. no no so we don't have that what we also don't have and the other thing we've done is we've taken in the main very talented black people and have done two things to them Gave them very high paying jobs in corporate. So there's no incentives to start a business because I can go get an education and get a good job in corporate and live comfortably. Or, and this is the worst thing we did, is we then said, well, here's BE transactions. So you can take 26% of a company you played no role in building and tomorrow you can buy a Range Rover, just like that. So the minute you distort the, the reward risk system, which is what entrepreneurship is, I take a risk. In future, I'm going to get a reward. The minute you distort it, people then don't flock to this thing called entrepreneurship. Mm. I spend a lot of time in Kenya, and I've often said, I will fund a Kenyan entrepreneur over South Africa yesterday. Because the Kenyans, boy, are in this thing for the long haul. Like when they build a business, they're building this business not for today or for tomorrow. They're building it for their children three generations from now. And that's not what we're not getting right, yeah. right? I keep saying this to people. Like, do you know there's no way in the world where the Jewish community is by in wholesale poor? Nowhere on planet Earth will you ever find a poor Jewish community. It doesn't happen. Mm. And it's not because Jewish people come from another planet or they're celestial beings. It's because they simply have understood over generations the institution of building a business. So the father starts making cookies. He leaves the cookies business to his son. And the son makes cookies and then he opens a grocery business. Now they make cookies and they have a grocery business. And then the other son comes and he opens a hardware store. So three, four generations down, you've got four, five generations of money that's been circulated in the system and they've taught each other business. Okay, so let's bring that into the South African system because we yes. don't have four or five generations <laughs> of business and money yes. that's been circulating yes. in families. We haven't got that. We've got principles of affirmative action. Yes. We've got black, and, uh, black economic yes. empowerment. And what you're speaking is almost saying those aren't working. No, that's They're not what not I'm saying. Is that no, 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 what no that's not saying? what I'm saying. So I think you need to understand. So remember, BEE is a very complex machinery. It's a very complex mechanism. It has elements of enterprise development, shop, shop. Supply development, absolutely necessary. Affirmative action and the development of employment equity, black talent and organizations, move them higher up the rung, expose them to operational levels so they know how to run businesses, absolutely necessary. What I am not in agreement with is taking wholesale shares and just giving it to people because they're politically connected. Yeah. We've done that for 20 something years. It hasn't worked it's for not us. Working. My mother worked in a company. I'll tell you a funny story. She worked in a company that did a BE transaction for $4 billion. My mother was in that company for 30 years. She didn't mm. get a cent of the $4 billion. So, so what you've now done is you've got black people who've worked in the business, yeah. who've built the business, who don't get any access to the future growth of that business just because they don't carry the, light, the right card of a political organization. And then when the company goes through a difficult time, it turns around and says to the black staff, no, wait, wait, we're not making profits. Please don't ask us for higher wages. And the staff go, but why? We're not participating in the profit growth of this business, so why must I let you make profits in future mm. when you're not letting me be a part of the dream? So we, there's, a, there's a big conversation to be had on both sides around how we build real entrepreneurship. South Africa, in my view, is at a, is at a crux now. We're at a, we're, we're at a turning point. We're either going to do one of two things. We're going to keep doing what we're doing, say the populist things that sound good and earn people votes. In 20 years' time, yours and my children will meet in the workplace and we would not have changed this country at all. Or we're going to start doing the real things and letting entrepreneurs, real entrepreneurs, get access to finance and access to real opportunities so we can actually build this country. That's what we need to do. Yeah. So we're talking today about developing black industrialists. How many black people own factories that employ more than 100 people? Yeah. And I'm not talking about bought a factory from a white man that employs 100 people. I'm talking about started it from the ground. Mm. When I started my business 15 years ago. Everybody thought I was crazy, and I've just sold it to an American investor group, and I've got my own money. And as a result, I'm saying, let me invest in other entrepreneurs. So I'm not saying this for theory. 
I've done it. You've done it. You know how it And works. I didn't ask for pity. I didn't say to people, give me the business because I was black. or give me the bu No, I said, give me the business because I'm the best at what I do. Yeah. You come against Vusi Tembawa, you better have your wits about you because I'm going to take you out in any space. Yeah. And the kind of belief, I think, is necessary. We had this belief in the 80s when black people ran spaza shops. Right? We had it in our own township's economies. But we've lo you've lost it somewhere along the line. Yeah, because we just sold this thing about pity now. And all of a sudden, we're all looking for pity. I don't want pity. Don't give me business for pity. Give it to me because I'm the best at what I do. I promise you, you come against me, you will not win. That's amazing. And if you, if, and if you come against me and win, then I'm willing to concede. You know what? You were better at this. Let me try something else. Yeah. That's what we need to do to really build this country. That's you. That's you. you you're one in a million. You really are. I mean, you've got this passion <laughs> burning inside of you. You've got a mind. No, don't look at me like that. Because you yeah. are. <laughs> I'm not there sure not about that. many people that are like you. And there are some people that are a little bit, you know, they own that Spaza shop. Yes. And they yes. work tirelessly every 100%. single day. They approach for more funding. They don't get it. They 100%. want to expand. They don't get it 100%. um they're women sitting beading and they are so talented nobody recognizes that talent nobody taps into it and allows them to empower their families 100 percent. we're losing somewhere along the line someone's not helping because the let me just this i feel very passionate about this i think the biggest lie we ever sold that was ever sold to black people specifically and i can only speak for blacks because i'm black the biggest lie that was ever sold to black people was this thing about small business I hate the term. Hate it. Absolutely hate it. You know, my mother belongs to a stock fell. She's been in it for 30 years, the stock fell. 30 years ago when she joined the stock fell, there was a bank that was formed called APSA around the same time. A stock fell is a group of people who come together, put money together in a depository, <clears throat> and later take the money and loan it to each other. Well, that's exactly what a bank does. What do you think my mother's stock fell value is today? Very little. Mm. How big is APSA? Listed on the stock exchange. Yeah. So the, the first thing we have to do to get the conditioning right is to teach black people that actually stop thinking small. You can start small, but don't think small. You know, there's no difference between the mama who runs a puzzle shop and ShopRite. Both are the same. You have a business in a physical building, a branding at the front, and stock that our customers come and buy every single morning. Yeah. So it's about us realizing we have to do the small things to start doing the big things. And state institutions, by the way, and this is important, state funding institutions have to stop looking for the easy way out. You know, in this country, it's easier to get money to open a franchise than it is to start a real business. Mm. Why? Because franchisees don't lose money. It's a franchise. Steers gives you the formula and say, go and open there, sell that at that price. But what's entrepreneurship now if you're telling me what burger I must sell and at what price? And by the way, you control my till. And at the end of the month, I give you 20% of my money. Where's the entrepreneurship in this? How am I really creating intergenerational wealth if I'm just giving more money to Kevin Hedewick? I'm not. Yeah. Let's be honest about it. Give people money to start their own things. And if they fail, then let's be honest about the fact that we failed and keep doing it. The Afrikaners did it after they took power from the British. The Jews did it in Israel. We need to do the same thing, which Absolutely. is just do the hard work. Absolutely. I love your way of thinking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired for you. Yeah, I <laughs> <laughs> your brain is moving. Okay, just... Quickly, we're going we're gonna to take a break here on the program. And afterwards, we'll uh, tell you how Vusi is giving away 40, um, in for, inviting applicants for uh, 40 businesses. But I'll, I'll tell you about that in a, in a short while. Vusi, thank you for your time. Thank, thank you, you very, very much. Very, very much. Thank you.